It came early. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's good to see all of you this morning. And we are glad to, that we are able to, to worship and celebrate our risen Savior. And of course, that's what uh, Virgil is going to bring us a message on today. So let your hearts be prepared. And in the process, let me read from Psalm 100. It says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the, the gift that you've given us. We didn't deserve it, but yet you gave it to us anyway, because you love us, not just us, not just those who sit in this church, but the world. This gift is freely offered to everyone. So as we worship you this morning, know our hearts, allow us to enter into your your gates of the throne room with praise. We thank you again and again. And we ask that your, your spirit would rest on Virgil this morning and give him the words that we need to hear today and for the day after. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you would stand, Sharon and Brandon will lead us in our first song. You ready for this? Put your seatbelts on. Good morning. Good morning. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. Amen. When I was younger, both in age and my walk with Christ, I couldn't understand why Christians were so joyful on this day. 
I mean, our Lord had been subjected to limitless amounts of ridicule, beatings, and more humiliation than any human being should have to endure. He was brutally executed as if he was a common criminal. He was nailed to the cross. Nailed. I cannot fathom the level of pain he must have felt. He did this for us, for me. I, we, can never repay him for this gift. Amen. We can never comprehend the cost. But that's the whole point. He doesn't expect us to earn his love, for we can never, ever do so. He only asks us to accept the gift. Just accept it. He is offering this gift of eternal love and life. All we have to do is receive it. Why is it so hard for us to see that? And after all he went through, his body was placed in the tomb. And the opening was sealed. In the New International Version in Scriptures, John 20, verses 1 through 2, we read, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Now, Mary Magdalene was a follower of Christ, one of the many that loved him and worked to advance God's purpose here on earth. Notice here it said, she went to the tomb. I'm sure there are many commentaries and learned journals that can do a much better job of explaining who she was and her role with the disciples than I ever could. I merely wish to point out that it was a woman who did this, not a man. This woman may have been going there to ensure the normal burial customs were followed as it relates to preparation of the body for its final earthly resting place. Can you put yourself in her shoes or sandals? It was dark. She was by herself walking to this location. This was after she had witnessed the cruel treatment of our Lord. Her heart had to have been broken. And though weighed down by those emotions, she still had the courage and fortitude to go to the tomb. One can only stand in awe at the strength of this woman. One other thing we have to remember is that Satan will do everything in his power to move you from the righteous path. He is clever, conniving, and will not stop. His very purpose is to remove any chance of hope we may feel. He takes pleasure in our pain. Let's do all we can to not give him the satisfaction of victory. And I would offer that includes not supporting the advertising of the Antichrist on super expensive sports shoes. Ones that have advertised having 666 on them, along with a small amount of human blood as well. When will it stop? Further, in John chapter 20, verses 11 through 18, we read, Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this point, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. One word. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. 
Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. Can you just imagine? And she told them that he had said these things to her. Imagine this. Mary is at the burial tomb, at which a large stone had been rolled over the entrance. We can only imagine how heavy this stone must have been. On her walk there, she may have been wondering how she was going to get inside, if that was her intent. How nervous would you be walking in the dark, away from Mainville or wherever you live, to a burial place away from town? There may be bandits and wild animals to contend with along the way. And once you do get there, things are not as you expected. I am in awe of this woman's courage. The strength she had to have had to make that walk, knowing the dangers she may face. Her faith was stronger than her fears. There is no shame in being scared. That just means we are human. It is what we do, even though we are scared, that reveals our character. Even though she was scared, her faith and love powered her through the fear. I can only imagine Satan watching the scene and laughing. He may have been thinking, I've done it. This Jesus is destroyed. His followers are heartbroken and no more. Can you just see the glint in his eye from all this? I can. He probably thought he had won. He had showed God and man just how weak this Christ person was. He felt he had showed everyone what true power is. And then, after he finished laughing, he looked around and began to feel uneasy. For he noticed something was missing. What could it be? But where is Jesus? Now Satan's worried. After all, surely he's done everything needed to prevent the people from having hope. And that, my brothers and sisters, is where he will fail. Amen. He thought he was all-powerful. He thought he was victorious. He thought he would prevail. It is true, Satan may take my body, but he will never, ever touch my soul. It belongs to God. I belong to God. We belong to God. And that, my friends, is the promise of hope. It is hope that will see us through the bad times as well as the good. It is hope that lights the way. It is hope that is freely given to us. For God, through the crucifixion of Christ, has made the way clear for us to have hope. True unyielding, unwavering hope, the kind of hope that we can cling to. I am here to tell Satan we will not go meekly into that dark night. We will not bow down to him, for we will not lose hope. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 We will fight and we will win. With God on our side, we cannot fail. With God on our side, we will defeat the forces of evil and darkness. With God on our side, we will one day realize the eternal blessings he has promised us. For it is that very hope that Jesus gave us by willingly giving his own life to clean humanity's sin. From before that point, clear through to the second coming. This is true power, God's power. 
Can I get an amen? Amen. amen? amen. Now, what do we do? So, keep the hope. Keep loving one another. And be joyous. Yes, be joyous and happy. For we know what the prize is. We know that one day, when our earthly bodies turn to dust, our spirits will be in heaven. There we will see Jesus. Think of it. We will see him and talk to him and walk with him. Oh, the questions I have, as I'm sure we all do. For then they will be answered. Be truly joyous. God has won. Jesus Christ is Lord. We do have a chance at eternal life. And that is something Satan cannot take away. Be well. <clears throat> now, Sharon can uh, lead us in the last song. If you'll please stand. shall turn to dawning and the dawning to noonday bright and Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth the kingdom of love and light we've a message to give to the nations that the Lord who reigneth above hath sent us his son to save us and show us that God is love and show us that God is love for the darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to noonday bright and Christ's great kingdom shall come show to the nations who the path of sorrow had trod that all of the world's great peoples might come to the truth of God might come to the truth of God for the darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to noonday bright and Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth the kingdom of love and light we don't want to spend the rest of this day and this next week but to remember the sacrifice that was made and remember to be happy now I thought for the blessing